what is the connection between yoga and psychology? So when I was studying psychology, we definitely study neurology, um, psychological physiology or physiological psychology. We study the mental illnesses. We study psychological disorders and a lot of problems related to the function um, um, in the brain or in the daily life when people um, interact with the society, environment, family, whatever it develops as frustration issues, the depression, phobias, and anxiety, and the underlying reasons for these diseases. Um, I could see the connection because that time, around 2000 to 2004, there was this movement in the West studying um, the benefits of meditation and there were a lot of researches. Now, yoga is not just meditation, but that time there was no much studies that talk about the yoga exercise, the physical exercise, I'm talking about it, but the focus was on breathing, meditation, and relaxation. That happens in the end. So after you finish your physical exercise, you sit, uh, relax, and then you lay down in um, the relaxation pose, and then you can do some meditation. So meditation is a different level and a different part of this practice, and it's like a difficult thing. But at the same time, the studies were conducted um, on meditation, relaxation, and few um, yoga exercises and I could see um, from that the effect of these practices on the brain chemicals. Now we have major brain chemicals that plays important roles in our mood, in our appetite, uh, in our sleeping patterns, in our personality, and this is how the mental problems uh, start. When you have an imbalance in your brain chemicals, then you develop an OCD, obsessive compulsive disorders, you become a very uh, obsessed character or schizophrenia or other issues, actually starts from the brain chemicals, even depression and anxiety. And that time there was no much researches, but in meditation uh, I could find um, some researches that really um, shows the effect and I could connect that with psychology. So later on I, I understood until now there are many studies. Now recently the new studies um, speak about the GABA level in the brain and depression in yoga practice. It really improves the gap level and these are scientific studies. Yoga teaches you um, a lot of things. So we always say yoga is not only on the mat, it's also outside the mat because our system works based on conditioning. We teach ourselves stress, we teach ourselves tension, we get conditioned that if we live in a situation where we are very tensed, we develop the habit of living that uh, situation. So in the yoga practice, you move your body in certain um, physical exercises, but you hold them and then you breathe and you're, you work with your muscles, you work with your um, um, cardio system because some of the practices are hard, some of them are a little bit faster or in a sequence that you have to control the breath with the movement, with the alignment of the body, with the strength, with the flexibility. So it's not just a physical practice. This physical practice reflects on your health, on your pulmonary function and your metabolic rates. So people uh, report a lot of benefits on the sleeping pattern, the mood, uh, the reaction, uh, general well-being, metabolic rates, a lot of people start losing weight while practicing yoga when it's not very high intensity. Now there are different intensities in yoga practice and advanced levels and, and medium levels and intermediate and but at the same time, even the beginner level, people report uh, these benefits, improvement of allergies or asthma attacks or all that. Yoga can be practiced from... Okay. Okay, yoga can be practiced from the age of six or seven. No other, in India they start earlier, but uh, it depends on the teacher and the style because um, the kids before uh, five years old, they have softer tissues and softer connective tissues and ligaments and joints and the injury is most really possible. Or that might, because um, in your articular system or in your joints or, or bones or muscles, the way you use your body and the lifestyle affects the structure and 
uh, the function of your system. So if you're a person who practice a lot of um, strengthening exercises, you will develop more uh, strong and maybe more tight tissues than if you practice ballet, for example. So uh, it depends on that. So we have to be careful with kids. Now the, 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 the yoga style that works with kids is Hatha yoga. And we mix it with a lot of fun or storytelling and active dynamic uh, exercises. We teach them relaxation because kids really need it. And it works with them in social development and mental development and focus and attention. In social development, kids are under a lot of frustration because they always want stuff we parents don't want them to do it or whatever control and discipline we try to put them in. So that actually creates pressure on the kid. Um, so teaching them to techniques that improves their relaxation and, and their mental focus and mental uh, serenity, it will of course help them to, to grow in, in, in a better way in the social aspects and of course the dynamic and, and the other aspects. Uh, for elder um, individuals above the, um, like 12 years and above, you can go with different styles of yoga. We have Hatha Yoga, Vinyasa Yoga, which is a sequence. And um, it, they call it sometimes power yoga because you move from a position to a position to a position with controlling the breath and it gets harder. Uh, it's used mainly for weight loss and strength uh, building. Uh, and individuals who practice vinyasa yoga are actually more strong than people uh, who just practice a very relaxed type of yoga. There is Iyengar yoga and it's used mainly for aligning the body and it's more integrative uh, type of uh, practice used with ill people. And, uh, um, even individuals, healthy individuals can practice really Iyengar yoga. I practice Iyengar yoga with, um, some, um, with a master in uh, in the Himalayas, but um, it focuses mainly on the alignment and adjustments and the right position of the body bones and um, everything. There is Ashtanga Yoga. Ashtanga Yoga is an old tradition and old lineage in yoga, and it's the hardest. And um, um, it is very difficult and it needs persistent practice. It focuses on balance, strength, handstand, and a lot of um, balance and hand balance uh, things in the higher series. Thank you.